This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. Oh boy, today we get to do some tillage. Uh, we're having some issues with the uh, hydraulic hoses on this Kuhn Krauss ripper here, but we'll get it worked out. Dad wants to get the uh, Kuhn Krauss ripper and the 9570, kind of get that ready to go. And we also would like to finish up, there's like 25 acres that are under a pivot in Illinois that we didn't get ripped because we didn't know how to turn the power unit on to move the pivot. But hopefully we'll get that figured out and we'll be done with our tillage in Illinois. I've also got a pretty major announcement as far as my equipment goes. So if you've been watching long enough, you'll remember that uh, way, way back in April, I took my 730 diesel to a shop to get the transmission worked on. A couple days ago, a guy called me and said, hey, it's done. So I went and paid him and uh, that day it was about 35 degrees and I drove this cabless beauty home on the side of the highway. Yeah, it was a little cold, but I wanted to spend some quality time with my good old 730 diesel. It doesn't really look a whole lot different on the outside. The clutch is a lot tighter now and this doesn't wobble back and forth anymore. And the flywheel end play is set correctly now. And I've got my trusty old John Deere RWA disc hooked up. We're going to start this bad boy up and go down the road for a little custom work. So the reason that this actually went to the shop in the first place was uh, in third gear, it made a terrible, terrible popping sound. And I kind of deduced that there was probably at least one, maybe two, three, four, five bearings that were bad in the tractor. So I parked it and got it got a date lined up for it to go to the shop and it just took the guy a little while but he does excellent work and i'm glad to have it back i'm especially glad to have it back not broken and uh, not a ticking time bomb it also still fires right up because it's a good old john deere two-cylinder diesel and that's what they do we're long overdue for a john deere 730 diesel cold start The long half mile road trip to this custom job is over. I'm gonna take the disc out of transport mode and we're gonna set her in the ground. We're disking around these brush piles here so nothing catches on fire when they burn them. Well, it's a disc. It does exactly what an old disc is supposed to do, which isn't very much. That was only slightly cold. The disc is performing exactly how I expected it to, which is it's doing what a small old disc does, which is not a lot. The way around this is if you just go over the same spot like 10 times, then it turns it to powder. Dad has some actual work for me to do today, so we're gonna call him and see what the plan is. The plan according to dad is I'm gonna go get him with his truck and he's gonna try and set the new Coon Ripper Oh, I have to say goodbye to the puppy dog first. You're a good girl. Rip the Scotty potty. Here we are, and there's Dad all the way down there at the bottom of the hill. This is definitely a little bit nicer tillage team than what I was just using. Dad's way back there, and he told me to hop in the ripper and go down the field so that he could watch it and make sure the adjustments that we did were actually doing what we wanted them to do. The front end of the machine right there, the disc blades, the disc part of the disc ripper, uh, were barely in the ground even though they were extended all the way down. We shortened up this piece right here and uh, that brought the front end of the, uh, the ripper down quite a bit and now the blades are actually in the ground like they're supposed to be. We really haven't tested either one of the rippers on heavy gumbo like we have here on the Missouri side of the river. Now this ground here, yeah, it's it's a, it's a pretty light natured dirt, but uh, the true test of any disc ripper is to take it down on some tight, tight gumbo, sink it in the ground, and see what it does. The screen in this tractor here on the armrest does not have auto track unlocked on it, 
So we're using this screen here. It's just like a 2630 or whatever. It's the last gen uh, screen. Looking at this pass before we made adjustments, and then this pass after we made adjustments, there's a definite difference in how the soil works down behind this thing. So I think that their adjustments were not in vain. Seeing an implement behind a big green tractor that's orange is a little different, but I think I'll get used to it. Man, why is that weirdo taking a video of me? That's enough of this for right now. Got other stuff to do. Another side quest for today is to get the 4320 home. We're using a uh, uh, drag conveyor or whatever to unload trucks to put in these bins, but uh, using the 4320 is hydraulics and uh, pretty sure the hydraulic pump uh, redesigned itself. So gotta get this thing home and uh, attempt to fix it, I guess. Oh, please start. Never lost faith. Since the hydraulic pump doesn't really work the greatest now, we brought the 8400 over and we were using that to run the drive over pit. The hydraulic pump, we're pretty sure, is up in here somewhere and we're gonna have to get that fixed. Ooh, it's starting to get kind of chilly and I'm gonna have to hype myself up for this drive. About eh, two and a half, three miles home, so a little bit cold. Oh well. I'm over this already. It's too cold. Oh, that wasn't so bad. This 4320 has a lot higher road gear than my 730 does. Not joking when I say that it probably goes twice as fast down the road as this thing. But this is a good old girl and I'm gonna keep her around for quite a while. Open station tractor is a lot more fun in the summer when it's actually warm and uh, not 35 degrees. Yep, it's that time of year. Parked the truck the wrong direction and now it's got frost on the windshield. I just dropped our main man Rob off here at the brush hog and the tractor, fueled and deft him up for the day. I'm heading back to the 9570RX and the Coon Krause disc ripper. I like to finish that farm. There's like 95 acres there and uh, I'd like to get it done today. I should be able to accomplish that barring any sort of major breakdown. Let's get something done. right at about four o'clock and you now this is kind of boring it's literally going across the field uh, 19 and three quarters feet at a time and uh, yeah it's this tillage activity is just always slow going I should be done with this field tonight by like seven or so the dad actually got that pivot from the last video moved and now he's working in the ground that was under the pivot yeah, good news I finally got the power unit to start figured out the tricks to it Tomorrow, we're gonna do the same thing again. You can see the texture of the ground down here. It's kind of wet and it's not really working down like I want it to, but that's how it goes sometimes. I can't work all the way to the edge of this field because there's a ditch right here that we cannot work across. So later on, I'm gonna work this piece out separately when I'm doing my end rows. Now we are on the auto steer line and I'm gonna set the ripper down. And now we almost spin out. Oh yeah, deep tillage. So a little bit more about what this tool actually is. It's a Kuhn Kraus Dominator 13 shank model. And up front we have straight displays, kind of chop up corn stalks a little bit just so it can flow through the rest of this device a little bit better. 
Then we have shanks in the middle. And then here on the back, similar to the case, we have uh, leveling discs or whatever you want to call them. But this chops it up just a little bit more. And then on the very back, we have a rolling basket to kind of mash it all back down. It's been a long time since this farm's been ripped, so that could be part of the reason that it's kind of pulling hard. But the main reason is that this ground down here on this side of the farm lays lower, it holds water more. What we're doing is trying to get under the layer of compaction that uh, years and years of tillage and farming causes and lift it up and shatter it and then set it back down. And in the spring, we're gonna come in probably with the field cultivator or the diamond harrow and make a pass over it and plant beans into it. This bottom field is a little bit different soil than some of our gumbo that's that way. Some of the topsoil on this farm eroded off the hill many eons ago and it came down on that side of the field. When you get over here, a little bit different dirt. Okay, back to work. First, got to uncurl the old, old glory here. Much better. Finally getting her finished up. I can't wait to get home for supper. Mom made chili for tonight. Yes, I love chili. I love that flag. Check out the moon tonight. 10 out of 10. It's a kind of a chilly morning. We're gonna let this bad boy warm up for like two hours and then we're gonna put some fuel in it. We are in beautiful Illinois once more. I'm gonna get this tractor moved over to Missouri today so that we can do some more work over there. Meanwhile, we're gonna attempt to cut some of this uh, nasty net wrap out of the ripper here. Oh yeah, this is nice. Net wrap is the enemy of bearings everywhere. Fortunately, a little bit of fire can take care of this stuff just fine. I think this bin right here would look really good as a bin Zebo. Well, with a little bit of time and a little bit of money, anything's possible. When we eventually tear this thing down, we're probably gonna cut off this angle iron first because this is good metal. Let's see what's inside. It could be anything. It could be stuck. Evidently, there were beans in here at one point in time. And I've never seen a floor in a bin like this before. It's kind of neat. Missouri, here we come. All we have to do is make it across the bridge, which is like a mile away, and we are good to go for Missouri. I'm going behind dad just so people have a little bit more advanced warning of the fact that there's a giant tractor on the bridge. I love moving equipment through Hannibal. Love, love, love. We have safely made it to the Missouri side. We're now back in the lovely tropical Northeast Missouri where it's a blistering 35 degrees today. Now we're gonna get the 570 and the Krauss moved over to the same farm. I think dad and I might be double teaming that place today. Our neighbor here has a wide stand 620RX and a, I think that's a, that's a big 2730 John Deere Ripper. I think the big Deere Rippers are like 13 shank and 25 foot wide. It's pretty similar to the, uh, case ripper it's got disc blades in the front that are like an actual disc and then ripper shanks and then a whole leveling apparatus behind that on this narrow road here i like to take it very slowly to minimize chances of ending up in the ditch again dad did trade in one of his seat tenders for this one so that's new for the next year we're gonna park it back here in this corner in our new shed. Sometimes I wonder why I have to work till midnight every night to get anything done. And it's because it's just now two o'clock and I am about to climb in the tractor for the first time. 
I can work for a few hours here, but then I've got an obligation to go to, and then I can come back. And hopefully by that time, Dad's in the other tractor getting that one going, and we're going to double team this 125 acres here. Hopefully we can get it done tonight, but anything can happen. I've gotten a decent amount done here on this side of the farm, which is about you know, 45 acres somewhere in there. The last time that this farm was ripped in its entirety was in like 2017. 2017 was the first year that I actually farmed with my dad and grandpa, and uh, <laughs> it feels like a long time ago. The last time we ripped it with a 512 John Deere disc ripper, and uh, I, I don't remember how it worked out. This dirt up here on this side of the bottom is a lot lighter, and it turns over easy, and it breaks down easier. It's not like the gumbo that is that way. Gumbo is just a completely different animal from anything on the hill. I'm parking this equipment here in this lot, and I made sure to stagger them just a little bit for a good photo op. Well, I came back down here to the bottom, and I'm ripping some more, but there's one thing that's not right here. See that one bolt down there that's kind of moving? As we're quickly discovering the one shortfall of these case or DMI rippers, the closing discs on the back of the implement like to loosen the bolts by themselves. And come to find out, on the 875s, they had an update and they made it backwards compatible with this because these have a bad habit of uh, breaking those eye bolts that hold these things on and then uh, the closing disc falls off. Actually, I'm one of the closing discs is completely off right now because the bolt broke and beer didn't have anything in stock to fix it. Once it's light outside, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But for now, an explanation has got to do. I just realized that I have another 9570RX right there with another ripper hooked up to it. So I don't really have to quit for the night, but it's eight o'clock, it's dark, the tractor's cold, it's a new field. Do I really want to mess with it? No, not really, not tonight. Instead, we're gonna hit it tomorrow morning. Come on. Good morning. Looks like we have quite a few birdies that are following me around. Dad and Justin are working on the case rippers so that I can start using that whenever it gets fixed, but for now, I am using the Kraus, and it's going all right. It would be a lot more cool if they were bald eagles. So on this case ripper, these Delima bobs right here are called the levelers. What they do is they move a little bit of dirt to make things a little more level behind the ripper. Unfortunately, they seem to be the shortcoming of the whole uh, case DMI ripper deal because these on this 875 are held on with an eye bolt and another bolt. And as we found out, they can come loose and uh, walk around and fall off sometimes. So Dad and Justin are here. We're gonna get the other one that fell off. We're gonna get it put back on and uh, attempt to get something done today. Here's the old, old style bracket and the new one. much more of this ripping I can stand to video. It's kind of boring for you guys and for me. About all I can do is talk about the specific fields and why they lay the way they do because this mechanism doesn't change. We're still pulling in five miles an hour. It's the same thing pass after pass, acre after acre. to know that I can't pass up a chance to talk. But this field here is 125 acres, technically in two fields, because there's an easement that goes between the two fields. And it lays east-west really long ways like this, and it's really short like that. Now that side of the place we can farm east and west because the rows are short enough and there's a good place to divide it so we can go north-south. But the rows over here, we're farming north-south, 
and they're too short to be long and too long to be short. You know what I mean? It, it just lays kind of funny. I've been asked before why we don't farm this piece uh, east-west, and the answer to that question is that uh, if we did that, the roads would be like a mile and a quarter long. And that kind of sucks for everything but planting. This is what we have, that's it. Uh, this is what I mean when I say it lays long this way. Now, this is the part over here that we're farming uh, east-west and then everything else we're farming north-south. And this part in here I did with the crow stripper, which is sitting over there. And there's a noticeable difference between the two rippers. After having run both of them side by side, I think that the Kraus does a better job of leaving it more level and uniform. But this case pulls a little bit easier and it's not so quirky. Like I had to play around a lot with the Kraus to get everything spaced out properly with the guidance. And it's supposed to be a 21 foot working width, but I ended up having to take 20 foot passes just because that's the way it was throwing dirt. And I cannot stand to see a row of standing corn stalks down the field. That just grinds my gears. So until we're done with this, you're not gonna hear from me anymore. Okay, here's my all aboard the struggle bus moment for the day. Bluetooth isn't working. I don't know if I have anyone from John Deere watching, but you guys should really make the Bluetooth work all the time. I was trying to listen to a Bullbeat song and well, that got in the way of it. Probably gonna trade it off for a case quad track now. You know, it's getting a little chilly here in the cab. Haha, -ha, funny numbers. With about a quarter mile of endros left, I broke not one or two or three or four or five, but six shear bolts on the ripper shanks, all at the same time in the same place. So that's kind of problematic, but luckily, I have another tractor and another ripper right there. So I'm gonna hop in that one and finish the quarter mile of inros that I have left and I'm going home. We just can't have nothing nice around here. Orange ripper to the rescue. Let's get this freak show over with. Yep, here's the carnage. There's only 11 shanks on this ripper and right now six of them are tripped. And one of the points is gone. I'm gonna measure that real quick so that we can get one and get one on the way and get it replaced. Now we're at Beard again. Get shear bolts for the ripper that I broke. But uh, I think that's gonna be it for this one, guys. And uh, hope you liked it. Subscribe. Spare parts secured. Oh, let's put that over there. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you later.